Welcome to Tiger Wolf. I'm Josh, and this is David. Please be aware, this podcast contains strong language and spoilers. So, I want to have a conversation about death in the capacity of, like, stories or... Just give me no room there to make a joke. Okay, go continue. (laughs) (laughs) You know, stories or, you know, comic books, video games, you know, things like that. Like, when when is a good time for a character's death? Or should every writer just off them whenever they feel like it? So I think that the usage of the death as a point to make um, is maybe a little bit overdone. Sometimes the pointlessness of the death can be the point. Uh, my example of that would be in Attack on Titan. They reference one of the characters that died off screen yeah. during one of the attacks. And it was like, um, Aaron, I think is a... Main character's name? Aaron. Yeah. E-R-I-I-N. Um, and he's like, wow, I didn't even notice. Or something. That, that, that type of thing. But like yeah. an internal monologue of, holy shit. Like, yeah. Um, and it was, it, like, it was impactful. Like, I was like, holy shit. This shit is real. Like, yeah. in, 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 you know, in, in that sense. Uh, yeah. Like, I can't trust that this core group of people are necessarily going to survive. Even though you can. Because... It's still an anime story. Well, I mean, but it's it's just a like bit closer a, to Game of Thrones. I said Game of Thrones. There was still Dragon few Ball characters. Z. There's still few characters you could trust to not die. Yeah. Jon Snow wasn't going to die, which is why his death was impactful. The is uh, when he died, and then they brought him back. Yeah. It was like holy shit. No, he's still got stuff to do in this story. But, but that's I can also see the thing. You know, some of George's writing. Um, he likes to, some of the character stories are literally uh, shaggy dog tales. Not familiar with that term. Basically, um, nothing this character does is going to matter. It's, their, their entire story is pointless. Right, but you can usually pick that shit out. Like, you know, Rickon. Like, from the, from the <laughs> beginning, I don't know who that is. Exactly. The youngest of the Star Kids. Well, it's just like the whole, like, the, the two brothers that were fighting for who should be king or whatever. Rinley and Stannis. Yeah, right. Honestly, I knew going into that, neither one of them fucking mattered in the end. Yeah. Like, they weren't, the, they weren't going to be the big players they thought they were. No. They had, they had significant impact and stuff. Mm-hmm. And actually kind of led to the reason why Jon Snow could come back to life. Yeah. Um, because it kind of got what's her face to leave, but yeah, no, it was. There's a few characters that like they also like ev- everything kind of happened to them, and they didn't in the end. Like you felt like eventually they were going to matter, and they they had a few impactful moments, but didn't really matter. Um, of note would be um. um uh, Theon. He mattered. Okay. The only thing he mattered for was to get Sansa out of danger that one time. There are things in the most recent season that he mattered. I haven't, I haven't so watched the most recent season That's why I said yet. he mattered. Uh, I did not have HBO when it came out, and I still haven't found a way to watch it yet. And it's kind of like a heavy ordeal to get into. Yeah. But I mean, like, you know, we're right. We just talked about a bunch of ones that you know, the the type of story that's being told, death can be unexpected, with like Martin's writing. Everyone can die. Well, yes, and like, and but usually there's a point to it, right? Like, so the point is typically the person who kills them gains. Yeah. Generally, and that's usually the point of death in in most medium. In that type of time era in our history. Yeah, and even in most medium. I mean, like, uh, in, I mean, yes, Wheel of Time is still in the similar... Uh, well, yes and no. The first era. time you think Tom dies, which, sorry, spoiler here, 
Um, this we not, this, had, we, this, <laughs> you totally said Jon Snow dies and comes back. I think it's a little late. Well, no, so because there's a new series starting for for Game of Th- uh, for Wheel of Time. That's why I'm saying that. Not because of the books. Go read the fucking books if you haven't. <laughs> I need to finish them. Um, <laughs> but the first time you, you think he dies because he went one on one with a fade so that R- Rand, I think it was, could get away. This bra is the epitome of what it is to be a bard in anything. He's got, he's got what's called the cloak of many colors, which is a bard thing in this world, okay. which has pockets where they hide things because they're also fucking rogues. Yeah. Which bards generally are. Yeah. Things. A lot of bards um, tend to. And it's said both. that he just produces knives because he's got like sleight of hand. He's a bard. He's a tumbler. He does all the bard things for performing and stuff like that. He's a singer and everything. Uh, can play instruments, and he's also every bit the same amount, uh, like the same level bard he is. He is also Roke. Nice. Slight. He's tan- bard without magic. <laughs> Slight tangent about bards. Yeah, I walked into this before, so you can find it online. There is a way to describe the uh, stats in Dungeons and Dragons using a tomato. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't... (sighs) What? Why are you pointing at me? I hate myself. (laughs) Because I walked into that. (laughs) Okay. Anyway. Um, But let's bring up... So, so, so he... Yeah, so I forgot what the point I was making was. Oh, so they... Obviously, they assume because these things move faster than anything they've ever seen move... Ever. Ever, yeah. Like, and, and it... The, one of the, my favorite things about this book series is, and I've probably said this before talking about it, is they drive it into your skull just how fast fades are. And you find out later it was to make a point about something else. Yeah. Like not only to know how fast fades are, because that is important. But they drive, explains but they, every time you see one, every time you see one and how move is. it. Yeah. They, they reference another type of creature and it says it moves so quickly it made, it made it look like a fade standing still. Yeah, and that so, moment, so, and in that moment, my brain was like, "Because at this point, <laughs> your I like, knew, no. <laughs> I knew exactly how fast a fade was. You You're know like, what I mean? No, how supernaturally fast they were. <laughs> so immediately, my brain was like, "Oh no, <laughs> no." Um, which is one of the reasons why you think Tom dies there. He shows back up later with a limp. Hmm. Okay, but I mean, like you know, in most in most novels and things like that. Characters don't die for no reason in most novels. But in a different medium, arguably probably my favorite medium, writers tend to kill off characters for shock value only. No, we talked about Game of Thrones already. (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) The TV show was more about the shock value than the yeah. the books were. Yeah, I was I was referencing comics. What comics? Oh, yeah, because nobody stays dead. Yeah, death. It's is not a even a shock door. value anymore. It's an eye roll value. Yeah. Death is a revolving door in comic books, and that's and I fucking hate it because it's one of the things where it's like, how many people actually have the potential power to bring somebody from back from the dead successfully? Every time. Not a whole lot of people in comic books actually can do that. No, not a lot. Especially Actual. the most powerful beings of, say, DC, which you know has one of the quotes for injustice, the gods among us, no. for a reason. Yeah. Superman, he can't do it. Nope. Wonder Woman is actually a god. She can't do it. Nope. There's the Lazarus Pit, which doesn't always yield the right results. Nope. <laughs> and... Maybe you, Doomsday? If you are a... If you're an entity, an elemental, then the green potentially can resurrect you. The green? Yeah, it's a... Uh, <clears throat> is that how... Um, that's how Ivy came po- back. Ivy came back, okay. Um, think of the green as literally... Um, the nature force? Yeah. That it, okay. Basically. Okay. 
That's fucking it's where Swamp Swamp Thing draws his power. It's where Ivy gets her power now. I thought his was ga- gamma radiation like the Hulk. No. Isn't that how he became Swamp Thing? No. Not did, I did I remember. not watch that show when I was younger? It may have been different in the show. <laughs> Apparently, the new Swamp Thing because he was a person, fucking great, and it got canceled. I I didn't even know. It looked it looked fucking it looked good. Like I all the trailer I saw made me almost get the DC uh, streaming like, service. Don't they even it, Constantine's DC right? Yeah, or, Constantine's DC. Don't they even like make references in Constantine how you can't just bring people back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, the funny thing is DC does it. Usually the characters who just come back tend to be from two groups. Either A, they are some form of a speedster, or B... Yeah, I thought Barry was supposed to be gone forever. Like, didn't he make the choice to be gone forever? He made himself into the lightning bolt that gave him his well, powers. No, I, I thought he was the one that turned himself into the red light at the distance. No, that was the. It's a it's a different speedster that sees Barry in the distance, but he's always a red yeah, Wally, blur on right? the horizon. No, he's a speedster from like the eighteen hundreds. Before the speed force was a, even nearly a thing. Yes. <sighs> Anyway, back to death. Yeah, because that's easier to explain. Uh, <laughs> what? So, but do you like, think? Do you think all deaths are necessary? Do you think that some people should die just because deaths happen? Yes. In in things. Yes. To 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 bring a form of like realism. groundedness. Yeah, groundedness or realism to the story. I believe death is a necessity. I do not always agree with do the fact think- that. The death, the permadeath, tend to be side characters. That bothers me. I'm not. I'm not talking about comic books. I'm just. Saying I'm just talking about stories in general. Does it? But that that does get into what my next question was going to be for you, which was, how do you feel about main characters dying? Like, do you feel like that makes it feel? And this is. I mean, is it too real in the sense of like? Because I've had somebody I knew who was, um, he was like 20, yeah. who uh, was shot and killed. And it always felt like, like I have a little rubber band I keep on my car just so I can take him with me wherever I go. Yeah. And um, it feels like he was, he was one of those people that like there was so much more he had to do. Like yeah. there was so much more for him. So do you think having characters that have a solid arc ahead of them dying and just basically removing that arc from happening is too real? No. Because it may, cause that'll make people, people feel like there's something missing. Because but I feel like you can... Um, I feel like you can use that kind of a moment as a pivotal point for another character. With uh, the character... With, I mean, if, if we're going into like this semi-realistic story, then that means this other character's got to cope with that death cope with possibly trying to pick up what that character was doing. Yes. And not being able to do it because they are not that person. Yes. There's always that potential, especially those are in Those are things that they do touch good. on in comic books a lot when there is death. Yes. Usually someone else... The Thor. When Thor, Odin's son, couldn't pick his hammer up anymore, Jane Foster was able to because she held so tightly to the belief that there must always be a Thor. You know, when uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, when Peter Parker died, Miles took up the name. Well, he also got the powers, too. Yeah, he also got the powers. When DC, when they believed Batman died, Bruce Wayne died, Dick Grayson became Batman for a while. Because they're always well, so Batman has to be is a, a bat. symbol. Batman is a symbol. Yeah, I don't know if I would consider Spider Man a symbol in the same way, though he kind of is for New York. He is for New York, but so is Daredevil. Like they have other people. Yeah, my point so, is, like, is, New York is, has like individual I think, heroes. I think for each Miles could have went with a different name. I don't know he if there's a better him. name than Spider Man for him to go by, though. I don't. I mean, he could have just gone by the Spider. 
And that sounds like a villain. It does. And actually, Parker went by that for a little while during uh, Civil War. He pulled out the black suit that Black uh, Cat had made for him that looked like the symbiote suit, but it was just, you know, cloth. It was just a suit. He wore it, called himself the Spider, broke into Riker's prison, and beat down Kingpin because he had a hitman target Aunt May. And leaving Kingpin in a bloody pile on the floor, mask off, top of the like, suit down. You know who the fuck I am, you dude. You know who I am. And he's looking around and he's, anyone else want to go after anyone I know? So he went Batman on him, is what you're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> he, went, he went full... <laughs> I was about to make a, a really interesting joke there. He went full Robert Downey Black uh, uh, Batman on him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because was, because um, Iron Man doesn't care if people know who he is. Yeah. Like who the fuck's gonna mess with Pepper, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. At that point, that's a that's a fair question. Or at this point, I should say. But you know, but there are other times where I feel like. If you're gonna kill a character, take them off of your take them off the board. They're gone. Like, don't necessarily not make stories with this character, but stories that are based here and pat and sense. Yeah. Not in like an alternate timeline. Like you can still do stories in alternate timelines and stuff with them, sure. Because they didn't necessarily die there. Yeah. But if it's this story or um not preceding sequential stories afterwards yeah. off of that, then, then don't, don't bother bringing them back. Leave Wolverine dead. Yeah, that's the biggest one for me is, look, I am a very huge Wolverine fan, mm -hmm. which you guys are probably sick of hearing, but I am. And the death of Wolverine... Oh, yeah, we've talked about this a few times. I was happy with. I thought it was a very well done well, that's ending like the movie, for the hero. That's like the movie Logan. I'm going to be kind of upset if they bring him back to be... I don't know if Hugh Jackman after that should be Wolverine again. Unless it's based clearly before that. Even if it's a different timeline or whatever. Because that was such a, it was such a good movie. And it was such a good ending for him. It was. And... As much as I would love to see Hugh Jackman reprise his role in the MCU as Wolverine. I think the I MCU think will be rather, a different Wolverine anyway. I think I would rather see, at this point, I think I would rather see a different actor playing a younger Wolverine. And, and, and uh, along with that, this like the MCU Wolverine is going to be written as a different Wolverine. Yeah, he will if be. If he's not, then he's probably not going to be the character he, he needs to be. He will more than like, like, well, I mean, he could still be the loner and everything. Well, That's what he is. He can be a loner. I'm just mean like the dark parts about his personality can be a little less shadowy for the MCU. Mm. Because the MCU doesn't go that dark in that sense. Not in that sense. Like even because I mean, even if you look at there's you kind of should, but well, I, okay. because of what they could have done with Iron Man, they did they did touch they did on it. They made yeah. him an alcoholic, but it was more like it was obvious if you were watching it, but it wasn't obvious if you were listening to it. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but I mean, they also touched on you know PTSD and right, right. They they forth. did it, but they did it in a not too deep manner is what i mean yeah i mean like with wolverine if you're gonna make a good i mean if they wolverine made a wolverine story if they made a wolverine centric story then i'm all for whatever the fuck they want to do for it if they're making him part of some version of x-men or some team or to be also part of a team then i don't think he should be that brooding dark character that he is because it's going to take away from the whole team stuff. Because guess what? Wolverine's a fucking team player. He doesn't bring that shit to those things. Nope. He leaves those where they belong. <laughs> when he's by himself and out murdering things. But, but like <laughs> post finding out that his claws were actually bone and that story in the Wolverine yeah. where he's going to find himself after that. Like I'm all for that kind of thing. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, you know, Wolverine, when he died, he was a member of the X-Men. He was a member of one of the Avengers teams. He was a father to 
I mean, a surrogate father and actual father to most of the second, well, what most people would consider the second and third generations of X-Men characters. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was very down to earth in a lot of ways that because of the things that happened to him. Like he knew despite all of this ability he has, the world will fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> and people like, no offense, Scott or what have you, they may have had rough lives, but they didn't have Logan's an, a, 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 a literal couple decades long consistent ass whooping of a life. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I can understand Cyclops' issues with Wolverine. Like, Wolverine, everyone looked to him as the, you know, he could make the jokes. He wasn't the leader. He wasn't the one He who also had could to literally his, take all of yeah. the hits, all of the hits ever. Yeah. At, at once, and he could still take it. Yeah, where Cyclops had to be the leader. He had to, right. you know, he had to be the, the asshole. Well, he also... He was an asshole in a different way. You don't like, have to be an asshole to be a leader. Some of my best leaders that I've, you know, worked under and that were people I got along with really well. Yeah. And that helped. Like, I had respect for them. I could see what they could do as... as as workers, at least. Um, and like, I trusted that they knew what needed to be done. Those were the qualities of leadership I needed from them. Yeah. I mean, like, Cyclops, he was a decent field leader for the X Men. Like, if you look. Oh, yeah. Tactically, at, he's. Tactically, apt. he's. He's. We're, yeah. We're off topic again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, when Wolverine died, Cyclops had a, a short story in uh, a comic called Life After Logan. Yeah. And he opens that comic with, I should be glad you're dead. He's talking to his uh, glass of whiskey, right? He's talking to a set of claw marks on the wall. Oh, yeah. Because he had gone to the Weapon X facility, one of the Weapon X facilities. He's like, I should be glad you're gone, that you're dead. You were a pain in my ass. Just this whole rant. And then he puts his hand on the wall and he goes, so why can't I sleep? Because it was a very important person to him. Whether like That's just the thing. Um, people express that hate is as much of an emotion of caring, in a sense, as love. It is. And they didn't even actually hate each other. No. <laughs> they just couldn't stand each other's presence. <laughs> yeah. They worked really well together when they worked together. Like, they were a scary good team. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you got one guy who can take any hit and you have another guy who can give those level of hits. <laughs> yeah. You have a guy who literally just tilts glasses down and he hits you with energy from basically the punch dimension. <laughs> um, isn't it actually supposed to be from just a dimension that is literally straight up energy? Yeah. It's just kinetic. It's the it's same places energy. that his brothers get it from, right? Yeah, it's a kinetic energy uh, dimension. Um. It's just his portals are in his eyes, whereas... Uh, Havoc has to pull Havoc, it. Havoc... He yeah he basically creates many rifts. That's what the blasts are. And I don't remember what their brother can do. Vulcan is um he basically can turn. He's kind of got this weird blend of Bishop's power and Superman. You know okay you remember who Bishop is right? He's uh, one of the time travelers. Yeah, his he's actual, the one with the M over his eye. Yeah, his actual power is any kinetic energy or any energy that hits him, he can redirect it. Right, right. Vulcan can do that with, you know, the... Uh, Circum Black Panther. Energy, the ambient energy that he can pull from the uh, punch dimension, as yeah. I'm going to call it. But he also, the longer he's exposed to sunlight, the stronger Vulcan becomes. That doesn't doesn't really fit in with the whole punch dimension thing. Yeah, but it amplifies the punch dimension stuff, which is where it gets kind of wonky with him. But he's also just in other super, words, they just wanted him to be OP. He's a super complex character. That's okay. I don't like. Anyway, <laughs> back to death. Yeah. So, I mean, one of my other favorite characters. I'm always when I'm whenever I'm writing characters, uh, I'm always like afraid 
to go there because then I can't use that character again, right? If I make it a definitive death. Good. I, I'll ask you. I second. can't use that character again. Yeah. Period. Like, I mean, yeah, I can have like flashbacks or something with them, but I can't use them for their abilities. The reasons that I created them, basically. Yeah. Like the whole mentality that they have, what have whatever aspects of them I have them for, I can no longer have those exact ones. Yes. Because making another character that's just a carbon copy of them would be fucking stupid. And it feels cheap. If it um, does. There are times you know, you don't get you don't that. get a hamster just because your hamster died because you want to replace the hamster. You want another you might want another hamster because you're missing uh a type of camaraderie that hamsters can provide. This yeah. is just an example. Um, I could put dogs or cats in here as well. No. Um, but you know that like they're going to have a different personality to them. They're going to be different. They're not going to be the same creature that you lost. Yeah, like Wolverine in X-23. She's not a copy. <laughs> Didn't they copy. try to write her look like him after he died? Uh, n- no. And that's honestly part of it. That's one of the things that bugged me about her, about her taking up the mantle is... Wolverine, His wasn't a symbol thing. Wolverine was an Avenger. He was an X-Man. He had all of these connections, all of these friends. He could pull just as much political weight as he could actual weight in a fight. You know, Logan walked into a room, people noticed. X, they didn't give her a chance to develop any of that. Sure, she was a member of the X-Men. They didn't give her a chance to get to know anyone on the Avengers. She, Tony Stark knew who she was. And he finds out at some point that she's actually Wolverine's j- biological daughter, not a clone. But that's... So they didn't explore her character enough before they started throwing her into things? Yeah, and so, well, I mean, they explored her character a lot in different ways. Like, you know, there's a lot of really dark things that dealt with her when she was, after she escaped the Weapon X facility, (laughs) but before she met the X-Men, she was actually a teenage prostitute in New York for individuals who enjoyed blades. Okay. I don't know how else to phrase that, both having blades used on them and using blades on other people because she can heal from any wound. Um, but I mean, like, once she became the new Wolverine, her, her development went in a different direction, but it didn't give her the opportunity to become the Wolverine. To have that pull that her father had. She was, for all instance, I love Lore. She was basically the poor man's Wolverine. I mean, like, I mean, that's she my, had a sidekick. But that goes that was, to my that point. That was her clone. Is she <laughs> ne- shouldn't necessarily get the same exact situation that he had. I mean, she had her own clone of, like, someone cloned her. And she found the clone and started raising it. Like a daughter. Well, actually like a sister, technically. But and you know, Wolverine had three claws. X twenty three has, you know, two claws in the hands, one in each foot. Gabby has one in each hand. And I like Gabby. I like Gabby a lot. She Deadpool gave her her nickname or her code name, and she has ran with it. And it's Honey Badger. Oh jeez. <laughs> But I just feel they could have given Laura more time to develop into something comparable to Logan I don't versus think just going, she all right, we're losing money. Bring him back. I don't think she necessarily should have, though. That was that. That's kind of the point I was making, is she can't be the exact same thing. If she is, then it's cheap. Yeah, but, I mean, then they just bring Logan back. And on top of that, we had uh, James Hudson... Wolverine's son from the Ultimate Universe. We had old man Logan. Okay, you can shut up about Wolverine now. <laughs> He's a character that's steeped in death, but always seems to cheat it. 
I mean, that was kind of the premise of his character. Uh, yeah, that was the same, premise same of thing his with character. Deadpool, who's the comedy version of him. Yep. Yeah. But I mean, like... Two katanas instead of one. <laughs> uh, at least you, it wasn't what, the one from the movies. What are your guys' thoughts on the usage of death in... In mediums. Yeah, uh, any medium. You know, video game, whatever. Well... I suppose that's the end of the episode. Please like, comment, follow, and share. And also, more importantly, thank you for listening. Take care. Bye.